You probably have moments in your life in which you have almost no time to do Blender because of work, because of your study or because of your family situation. And it sometimes feels as if you cannot take the time to make a decent looking render. Well, not anymore because I've been going through this for the past month and I've actually found several techniques and tips in order to get through this and make better renders in under an hour. But not only that, you'll also learn how to make your renders look a lot more cinematic. So let's dive into it right now. First thing you need to do is to go for close-ups. While in a close-up render, you can use a lot of tricks to make it look better. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to place an object in the front. Now, why would you want to do that? We want to create depth in the scene by having objects at different ranges on our X and Y axis, creating a depth perspective. So what we are going to do is we're going to place an object on the beginning near our camera. And then when we use our camera for the depth of field, we can get a great bokeh. And we are going to do that by going to the camera right over here. And first we're gonna to wanna to bring in an empty and we can use a focus object to adjust our lens to and from. We want to have an empty so we can control what is in focus in the scene. So if you want to make an animation, you can also do a rack focus effect in which you rack from the front to the back and the blur changes like this. If you place your object on the front and you've got a nice depth of field, then your render is probably already looking a lot better and a lot more cinematic. But we can do some other things in order to make your render more interesting. We can go over to the composition guides in the camera itself. And there we can see thirds or center. We can just pick the thirds. Because one common rule in camera usage is to use the thirds of the screen to place your objects in. So often you'll find in Hollywood movies and different series alike that the characters are placed on exactly these grids these grids on the thirds. And we can actually use this to make our renders better. Because if we were to place our objects all over the scene with no central focus, with no point of guidance to which we want to lead our audience's eye, then the render is going to look less interesting than when you were going to use, let's say the thirds or perspectival lines. So what you wanna do is you wanna build up from simple structures to more complex structures. And by using the simple structures, we can make them look better by using embellishments. Let's say you have a Roman column and on it there's an entablature. You can use uh, triglyphs, for example, to uh, make it look a little bit better, a little bit more visual noise. That is also very important. You cannot just scramble it all over the place because we will lose focus of what is actually important. And we do not know what to look at and the image becomes unstructured. The next thing you want to do is you probably want to relocate your camera or bring a different camera into the scene to try out some different positions, which is basically a good rule in general to make more renders out of one scene. Because what I used to do is that I would place one camera and then I build up the scene from there. And I was like, all right, this is going to be the shot. This is going to be the picture that I have in my head. It has to be this. But actually, once you move around the camera a little bit, play around with your object slightly, you can get a way better result simply by moving the camera. But everything is already there. So you can make great use of that and make some cool renders from one simple scene that you built. All right, so the next one is HDRI glass reflective surfaces. You wanna add in some reflective objects and materials into your scene because the HDRI can add a lot. Now, my favorite HDRI is Shanghai Bund. What you would want to do is you wanna add some water bottles or you wanna add some glass into the scene because it reflects really nice colors and lighting. The next thing you can do is to add in a particle system because everywhere in the world, there is different things lying around, small stuff, big stuff, and we can emulate that by using a particle system real quickly and get thousands of objects into the scene. The stones, the grass is often a good one. You can also use it for scraps of paper or twigs and things like that. Make sure to add in a particle system to add some more randomization to the scene with little time. The next thing you wanna have a look at is the crevices. Crevices that accumulate dust and you wanna add that to your material. So one way to do this is by using the ambient occlusion node. We can go over this in a moment. And another way to do it is by using, uh, let's say a particle system or some randomly distributed grass so that you can really fill up those crevices and work away those edges, those unnatural digital edges. The next thing you would want to do is to add in a volumetric. Volumetric really helps not only obscure some things in your render that you do not want to have visible, but it also helps to give some atmosphere to the scene. These are the two techniques that I use mainly for my volumetric, plus one bonus tip for an easy lighting setup that you can use with volumetric to get real cool looking renders very fast. All right, so we're in Blender now and we can go and make a cube. And this cube is going to be our volumetric. Principal volume, plug it into the volume. 
Now, what can we do with this? We can do Shift A and add in a gradient, a color ramp, and plug those into each other, and the color ramp goes into the density. Now, when you do this, you can actually see that a gradient is happening along one side. What we can do is we can go over to the gradient texture, press Ctrl T, and then change the rotation on either one of those axes. And if it doesn't work out, another easy method is to just rotate it like this. And then you've got your gradient as well. All right, another trick that we can do with the principal volume is to make a texture out of it. I'm going to add in a noise texture. I'm going to add in a color ramp, plug those into each other, and then a the color into the density. Now we do not see very much, but once we increase this one, you can see that we get a cloud-like pattern. And this is because of the noise. So the noise dictates how this will look. So as you can see, we've got a render here with our volumetric setup. It's got some type of gradient in it. And what we can do is place one light right behind this entire setup. And it will already make it look a whole lot more interesting. So simply placing a light in opposition to the camera behind the volumetric is a pretty cool trick to make your render look good. All right, and now the final trick with the ambient occlusion node, as I mentioned before. So we're going to add a principal BSDF. Another one, we're going to put it to black like this, add in an ambient occlusion node. And then if we select these principal BSDFs together and press control zero, it will automatically make a mix shader. And we're going to plug in the color into the factor of this mix shader. Now, we're also going to place a color ramp in between and change this distance to a lower, lower value. And as you can see happening right here, things are going on. Maybe it's better to just, yes. So this was the texture before, and this is the texture now. We've gotten a lot more contrast in the corners and edges of this object because of the ambient occlusion node. You can also adjust the color ramp to get even more of those darker places. If you want to have a different texture in these corners and crevices, you can be free and go ahead to do that. So the next thing we need to go over is lighting. Lighting is really important and I've also made several videos about this so go check them out. There's a couple of easy tips we can go over right now with regard to lighting. You can use a black body node in order to simulate real lighting setups. So whenever I use a point light or an area light, I always go to use nodes right over there. And when I press on use nodes, it opens up this entire system. You can also click on this yellow button and then pick black body. And as you pick black body, you can change the temperature slider. And now your lighting will make use of more realistic color temperatures. And another thing you can do is turn down the spread. And now the lighting becomes a lot harder or a lot softer, depending on what the spread is. And when you have a very low spread, let's say one degree, then the lighting is very hard, which means that we can also place a texture into it to get some random variation in our lighting and in our shadows as well, which is a really good idea if you want to make textures and materials look more interesting real easy real easy for you but not for the render engine and if you want to know more about that go check out my channel i've actually got a 10 lighting tips tutorial in which there are some very cool tips and tricks to use one last thing that you want to do in blender is to use the asset browser so when you have made a high quality asset of which you think that it is really well modeled then place it into your asset browser to use it the next time and if you do this every time then over time you will accumulate extra models that are high quality in which you were let's say passionate to put in the work because that's usually how you start out oh i want to make a building bam passionate about the building make the building and next time a couple of weeks later i want to make a city render oh i wish i had a building <sighs> i don't want to make a building now you're there making a building but what you could also do is take the building from two weeks ago that you were passionate about and that you spent a lot of time working on and place it in your new scene if you want to make your render look even better I highly recommend watching my other video on how to improve your render in DaVinci Resolve. It's got some great tips and tricks, so check it out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click on subscribe. And if you want to know how I made this render, then I highly recommend watching this video next. <laughs>